There are different ways to indicate the composition of compounds. Uh, the chemical formula is, is very useful to chemists. It gives the um, relative quantities of each element. But the mass percent composition, or sometimes just called the mass percent, can also be really useful. And we can calculate that from the chemical formula. Just in general, remembering this can pull you through a lot of, oh, I forgot what to do with that situations. Percent means the part over the whole times 100. So when we're dealing with any sort of percent, figure out, well, what, what's the part that we're interested in? What's the whole thing? Divide those, multiply by 100. So when we do mass percent composition, we identify the percentage of each element in that compound by mass. And this can be figured out from the formula or it can be figured out experimentally. You can take a compound and decompose it into its individual um, elements and weigh them and find out what the mass percent is. Now, ideally, the percentages of each element would add up to 100%. They're going to get close, but not necessarily perfectly, because there is some rounding involved. So if we look at the mass percent of element X in the compound, it'll be the element, mass of element X in one mole of the compound divided by the mass of the whole mole of compound, not just the X that's in it. So X is the part. The whole compound is the whole times 100. And here's an example. What is the mass percent of each element in water? There's no numbers in that question. Right? There's no numbers. It's OK. What's the formula for water? H2O. So we're looking for the percent hydrogen that will equal the grams of hydrogen in one mole divided by the grams of water in one mole, which is just the molar mass of water times 100. Well, what's the molar mass of water? There's two hydrogens, each 1.008, and one oxygen, and that gives us 18. Point zero. Oh, we'll do the one one six thing. I'm going to use this in the calculation, and so I'm choosing not to round it. So the mass of one mole of oxygen is this 18.016 grams. What's the mass of hydrogen? It's this first part. When you write out your work for calculating the molar mass, you, each of those terms is going to be the mass of one of the elements. So for hydrogen, I'm going to take this in the top. That's going to be a 2 point. 016 grams of hydrogen multiplied by 100. I don't remember the mass percent of hydrogen. 2.016 divided by 18.016 times 100. Now, because I rounded my molar masses here to 4, then I should have 4 in my percent 11.19 percent hydrogen. That doesn't look like a percent sign. It looks like, I don't know what it looks like, but it doesn't look like a percent sign. Let's see if I can do it better. Is that better? 11.19 percent of water by mass is hydrogen. What's the mass percent of oxygen? Two ways to find it. We could do the same thing, or we could take 100 and subtract 11.19. I'm going to just do change sign on my calculator, plus 100, 
88.81% oxygen. Let's try it the other way, though, too. Instead of 2.016, put 16 in there. 16 divided by 18.016 times 100. What do you know? 88.81%. So you should be able to find the percent composition of a compound given its name. Because we just learned how to write formulas from names. So you can write the formula, and the formula is the ticket to finding the mass percent. Mass percent makes a great conversion factor. It's very helpful to remember that per cent means per 100. Now, part over whole times 100 doesn't look like that, but really what we're saying is how many per 100 are there? If you have 100 people and 75% of them drive a Toyota, I don't know, it's 75 people per 100 people. That's what a percent means. So if we are given a percent composition, 69.58% chlorine, we can just take that and write it down as 69.58 grams of chlorine per 100 grams of compound. And that allows us to do conversions between the mass of one element in the compound and the mass of the whole compound. So what is the mass of hydrogen contained in 15.0 kilograms of water? We're supposed to remember the percentage of hydrogen. I didn't mean to do that. So the percent hydrogen was 11.19%, right? We calculated that already. So that is a fabulous little conversion factor, 11.19 grams of hydrogen per 100 grams of water. So if we have 15 kilograms of water, that's the number that we're given to start with, 15 kilograms of water. And we want to find mass of hydrogen. Well, there's kilograms and there's grams. Is it telling us what unit the mass of hydrogen has to be in? No, it isn't. Could we report the answer in kilograms? It doesn't say we can't. So if it's 119 grams of hydrogen per 100 grams, what's that relationship in kilograms? It's the same, right? It's 119 kilograms of hydrogen per 100 kilograms of water except I didn't write kilo. Kilograms. You could do it in pounds. You could do it in tons. You could do it in nanograms. The nice thing about a percent is it doesn't specify the unit. It's just that the unit in the numerator and the unit in the denominator need to be the same. So this conversion factor is going to be more convenient than the first one, right? So I want kilograms of water on the bottom and kilograms of hydrogen on top. So it's 11.19 per 100. Now, if you're good with percentages, you might say, oh, well, I, all you do is 9, it's 15 times 0.1111 or 0.1119. Yeah, that's what it is. This is just a different way of thinking about it.
and we end up with 1.67 kilograms of hydrogen. Is that a reasonable mass in 15 kilograms of water? Yeah, because hydrogen is 11% of the mass of water. It's a small percentage, and this number is smaller than 15 kilograms. If we came up with 16.7 kilograms or 167 kilograms, that would be impossible, right? Because you can't have more hydrogen than you have water. It's just like your head cannot weigh more than your entire body, including your head, right? Because how would that even work? The rest of your body would have negative mass. It's not possible. People do things like that in their lab reports. I, I, it's funny and sad. Any questions? I'm tired. We can also get conversion factors that are hiding in the molecular formula. So the chemical formula has conversion factors in it. If we look at this formula, C2, Cl4, F2, which is not something that we have learned how to name, in case you're wondering, we can see that there are two moles of carbon for every mole of compound, just from the formula. We can see there are four moles of chlorine for every mole of compound. We could also see that there are two moles of carbon for every two moles of fluorine. You can get all kinds of things pulling out of that. It's important to know that these are the amounts in moles. The chemical formula relates particles. And a mole is this really big number of particles. It's just a fancy chemist dozen, right? So this does not have to do with mass. It has to do with numbers of particles. Determine the mass of oxygen in a 7.2 gram sample of aluminum sulfate. There are different ways to approach some of these problems, but we're going to use the chemical formula as a conversion factor because that's what we just talked about. We need the chemical formula for aluminum sulfate. What kind of a compound is it? Ionic, molecular, or acid? Please don't say acid. It doesn't have the word acid in it. Aluminum is a metal or a nonmetal? It's a metal. So because aluminum is a metal, this has to be ionic, right? Ionic compound, then we have to look at the formulas of the ions. So aluminum is Al, and what's the charge on aluminum? 3 plus. And sulfate is SO4 with a 2 minus charge. And so we put those two together. We need Al2. SO4, 3. So 7.2 grams of aluminum sulfate. And we want to end up with grams of oxygen. What is the conversion factor hiding in here between um, oxygen and, and the whole thing? Four times three, 12. So there's 12 moles of oxygen for every one mole of aluminum sulfate. So that's something, something that we can use. But there's no way around it. We're just going to have to calculate the molar mass of aluminum sulfate. Aluminum, blank on that one, 26.98. So two aluminums, 26.98. How many sulfurs in the formula? Three. 3 times 32.07, and there's 12 oxygens, 12 times 16. T 
2 times 26.98 plus 3 times 32.07 plus 12 times 16. It's a big guy, 342.17. The molar mass allows us to convert to moles of aluminum sulfate. So that's grams of Al2SO4. And that's one mole of Al2SO4. Yeah, I get tired of writing all those guys out too. And I started writing way too big, and now it's just going to be this ugly mess. I'm sorry. Now we can pull this guy in. There's 12 moles of oxygen for every mole of aluminum sulfate. So we're, I'm looking at the units, and I want to divide by aluminum sulfate, and I want to multiply by oxygen. So one mole, no, 12. 12 moles of oxygen and one mole of aluminum sulfate. Bless you. The moles of aluminum sulfate cancel out. And go up here. We're going to multiply by... How do we figure out the mass of 12 moles of oxygen? We use the molar mass of oxygen, right? 16.00 grams of oxygen per mole of oxygen. Moles of oxygen cancel moles of oxygen. We end up with grams of oxygen. 7.2 divided by 342.17 times 12 times 16. 4.0. 4. 4. is the mass of oxygen in a 7.2 gram sample of aluminum sulfate. Any questions? This sort of a calculation could come up in, um, you know, if you're looking into nutrition. Like if you're interested in the amount of sodium that you're taking in and you have a mass of table salt. Well, the mass of table salt includes sodium and chlorine. How much of that is just the sodium? You can do a calculation like this and figure that out.